Ram, how is climate change affecting Nepal? Uh, it's a big issue and uh, we can see a lot of uh, uh, impacts from climate change starting from this Nepal is Himalayan country and uh, there are lots of you know Himalayas uh, right now that we see that the Himalayas is melting and the snow is melting and and uh, starting from Himalaya to down to Tarai and we have lots of you know the people they do cultivate uh, agriculture they do uh, keep livestock and whole set of you know they starting from the Himalaya the most uh, um, uh, big uh, the biggest problem is that there is a fear of uh, glof that's the glacier lake outburst uh, flood and that is uh, one of the biggest problems and that fears a lot and if you go in the uh, mountain area this agriculture is being impacted even that we have seen the uh, public health is also being impacted by climate change. That's why there are lots of changes, especially in the water sector, agriculture sector, and even in the public health sector. That's why, you know, these people are uh, being impacted by climate change from the various sector. And so are glacial lake outburst events already becoming more frequent in Nepal, or is it just a fear for the future? And this is uh, the, the record shows that uh, the 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 possibility of having glove this the is uh, is uh, increasing day by day because uh, due to increase in temperature in Himalaya that there is a possibility of having that kind of glove and we had also a couple of floods uh, glove before also but the, there is the prediction that that is going to be increased uh, uh, in future. What are the government's priorities for tackling climate change? Uh, government has uh, initiated a lot of, uh, you know, this uh, initiative. Actually, the, the, there are so, so many initiatives that government has initiated, and uh, you know that one one thing is the institution. How to create institution so that climate change can be uh, addressed properly. Other thing is that uh, uh, you know this. Uh, uh, having kind of program that what are the different programs that uh, that we can actually initiate so that we can offset the uh, climate change impact and Nepal Nepal developed NAPA this national adaptation program of actions and it has identified uh, nine different sectors uh, uh, and uh, they have proposed uh, different uh, pro project within NAPA and uh, those those are also being uh, being implemented and at the same time there are other initiative also like pilot program on climate resilience and there is also LDCF funding and uh, there is also ecosystem based adaptation funding from different different organizations that's why government has been coordinating all those programs and uh, and trying to demonstrate a kind of uh, model so that that can be replicated in other part of the country that's why government has uh, has response through building this uh, institution de developing programs and project at the level local level and i should also mention that the nepal is ahead in uh, in developing uh, uh, what what we call is lapa Inst we have NAPA at national level, but we have also LAPA is local adapt adaptation plan of actions so at the at the community level, at the local level, bringing all the stakeholders at one place so that the climate change can be actually integrated into the development process. That is how the government has uh, responded uh, on climate change issues. Ram, take me to a village in the high Himalaya and make it a village that is creating its own local adaptation plan of action. Describe to me what their concerns are, what kind of concrete plans they are making for the future to cope with climate change. Uh, actually climate change is, uh, is uh, sometimes people see that uh, climate change is also a sector and they only talk about climate change. When you go ex-village, like in 
uh, one village in mountain areas and the people are suffering yeah certainly from climate change but there are so many other issues like people they they do not have health services they do not have education they 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 are far from the road you know uh, they i mean so many so many so many issues development issues and the climate change is one of them and the manifestation of the climate change if you see from scientific point of view that you can see very clearly but at the community level people they yeah they know that that is being uh, that climate change has really impacted but you know there, there are so many other important priorities that's why uh, people they they think that is important but you know there are also other other important equally important issues and uh, in village uh, especially they 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 have community level plan and where they integrate all kind of activities in that community plan where the local government is also there local civil society is all, also there uh, this farmers groups are also there and they they make a plan uh, which is which is basically the 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 plan which is also uh, inti uh, integrates the climate change issues how to address the climate change when uh, when there is late uh, rainfall then how to address that if there is high flood and how to do that in village people they have also done local level to disaster disaster preparedness plan i mean that kind of things you know this whole kind of issues they sit together they identify and they prioritize and they make a plan and they uh, implement that. This is how they, they do in villages. Can you give me an example from the farming sector? How might they change their practices in the light of climate change impacts? Yeah, there has been several uh, changes that we, we have noticed. And I have also, I, I was also involved in a couple of uh, studies before, and I'm also doing kind of other studies. But what I see is that people, they are responding to climate change um, through various means. Sometimes that what we see that if they do not get uh, sufficient rain for, to cultivate paddy, they have changed to um, vegetable farm. And I have seen in a couple of places they have change the whole cropping patterns and they instead of uh, planting rice they started cultivating bananas you know that is one thing and other thing is sometimes people they they uh, select the varieties which needs uh, less uh, less water or that can be grown in, even in the dr drought period you know that that is uh, that is something that I, we have very specific examples, but there can be other uh, others, various kind of examples of that how people are responding to climate change. Tell me about one of the most exciting initiatives you've seen in Nepal to tackle climate change. There are uh, many, many issues, uh, uh, but if you ask me one thing that the uh, especially uh, uh, integrating energy issue in agriculture sector. Uh, although it's it's uh, renewable energy is uh, is uh, it's not sometimes it's it's not that uh, easy to get accessibility is problems people they do not have sufficient uh, resources to invest on that. But that is that is one area that I see. Uh, people are moving and uh, slightly this uh, energy access is also especially the renewable energy uh, access is also being increased government has also re in fact provided some sort of subsidies on that traditionally that's the, in the in the past uh, the only it was uh, for uh, urban area but the government has provided the similar kind of subsidy to the uh, in the rural areas also means that there is a possibility of uh, offsetting energy at the community level or the, at the village level also but there are also that i uh, uh, the low carbon economic uh, strategy low carbon economic development strategy is being uh, being developed by the government and there will be we are working on that there will be a lot of uh, a lot of uh, options and uh, and uh, there is also opportunity to take that those options uh, uh, so that we can address the climate change uh, impacts at country level. Given that Nepal is a very low emitting country, uh, why do you think the government is interested in low carbon development and how will it uh, sell that idea to other stakeholders? Uh, I think that there is a strong reason for that, although that we are not emitting a lot of uh, um, 
carbon, but suddenly we are emitting um, at least some some carbon, and this is our responsibility. Maybe that our uh, we are emitting less, but we are we should also offset the, the in the proportion that whatever we are we are emitting that is one reason another reason is uh, i think that we should also show the other countries that the big countries who is emitting who are emitting more look that uh, even though we are emitting less maybe that we are to, trying hard to make uh, you know this uh, our economy the climate uh, resilient or the our we want to create a kind of uh, carbon neutral economy and I think uh, in future, you know, the people, th people they believe or not, but one day uh, the, the the climate resilient technology will be in at the at the east stage uh, where we can use that without hampering our development process. That is what I believe. That's why why don't we go in that kind of no regret strategy? Why don't we choose that kind of option which will be which will make our globe sustainable and we can also care our environment and ecosystems. That is what that I personally believe and this is something that the, uh, the, the, the government is also interested in those things. That's why we, we are developing this low carbon economy strategy. Can you give me some examples of promising energy technologies that are now being rolled out in the agriculture sector? Uh, what I see, there are a couple of uh, areas that where we can use energy in uh, in agriculture sector, like Nepal. That sometimes the the, the, the energy, this irrigation is not that uh, very much developed, and sometimes we need to pump water from river or from underground and uh, so far we are using uh, diesel plant and uh, you know that diesel plant is also very uh, expensive in Nepal then why don't we just move the uh, solar energy base in uh, uh, systems pumping sets so that we can just lift water and irrigate uh, uh, agriculture field maybe that it's uh, if we if we want to do in the larger scale maybe we need a bigger uh, pump set but at least people they have already started uh, using in uh, you know kitchen gardens and small lands where you can irrigate even wheat, even uh, other maize, those kind of things. That is what I see. Uh, other thing is, uh, uh, in terms of uh, post harvest technologies, uh, it's very difficult. I uh, we 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 have a big crisis of uh, power crisis. We do not have, you know, so even. Our uh, you know, hydro is our biggest source, but still we do not have sufficient uh, uh, power. That's why the processing, storing uh, is, is a big problem and we can use uh, energy, especially solar energy to, uh, for storing uh, you know, fruits and uh, vegetables and other things. And recently we are also uh, we are doing this uh, grain uh, drying uh, methods and traditionally we have been using other things, uh, other other powers, energy things, but right now that we are using solar energy. That, that is how that we are we are moving in that direction. It's not in big scale, but we have started uh, in some places. That's good, uh, good initiative. Um, so I was going to ask you for an example of um government-backed uh, low-carbon development initiative. Do you have a different example, or would you have actually used the same the same example? Uh, the, so far, uh, government has not done. Uh, this is uh, the strategy being developed. That's why there is no. Uh, there might be some some specific examples like using electric vehicle. Uh, th that is that is there, but it's not. Uh, we do not have a strategy. The, that's why we do. We, it's very difficult to claim that it's a government initiative. But government has uh, actually supported this electric vehicle instead of using diesel. They they provide some kind of subsidy uh, uh, to electric vehicles so that uh, I mean so we can really offset the uh, diesel. But it's not. It's it's only in Kathmandu area. The scale is not that big. But government has done that. That's promising, though. Yeah. So that could be um, scaled out potentially. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And yeah. what is uh, the role for private sector? Uh, how is business playing a role in climate compatible development in Nepal? Uh, it's a very very uh, tricky questions. I I I I was involved in one project where uh, that we invited the private sector. 
uh, to play uh, some sort of roles and uh, some of the business houses they have shown interest but the the they are not i mean uh, they are not i mean they they showed their interest but uh, it's still uh, they they are not actually involved in those kind of things they, there is a positive response but uh, still uh, that part is weak probably we need to aware them government should take them in confidence and uh, what will happen if they uh, go uh, for this kind of climate compatible development because they need kind of support they need assurance they need you know kind of uh, you know, in any way from uh, support from the government and the government that we are in transition stage and hopefully we'll have i mean we have um, uh, i mean a stable government now and let's see that in future that we can also do something on that i'm very very much uh, optimistic because uh, this is uh, i mean struggle you know this we we have different kind of issues and still we need to survive and we need to care uh, our earth and we need to follow our ecosystems because my background is also uh, biodiversity environment and i think that that's that's the that's the beauty and uh, pr probably we we have problems we have lots of challenges but we we need to face that uh, uh, otherwise there uh, was the meaning of having i mean life you know that's, that's why i am very much optimistic and uh, one day that we we are going to win this uh, battle